mwaka elfu. Jambo la pili, maji ya hili bwawa yatatumika kufanya misimu miwili ya upanzi. What we call two cropping seasons per year. And as the project nears completion, farmers here look forward to better days ahead that soon their water problems will come to an end. Hiyo ndamu imejengwa hapo naona serikali imetufanya mzuri kabisa. Kuna hii kanalo nilikuwa nimekwambia imeconnect maji ya Nyamindi inapeleka kwa mtu mwingine inaitwa Diva. Kwa hivyo hii maji ya Nyamindi tutakuwa tukipewa watu hapa Moyaisi. Na wale watakunywa hiyo ya Diva juu yako na ile damu itawatremsia maji. Kwa hivyo Water from the dam is expected to increase the acreage and rice and enable double cropping annually. This will not just increase rice production in the country and bridge the current deficit, but will also help in putting money in the pockets of farmers. Tukizidi kuweka hekari zaidi, tuweza kufikia wananchi zaidi na watanufaika kwa pata kazi wale ambao wanafanya kilimo wala kwa value chain. All right, All right uh, Kirinyaga uh, County is an, in an interesting county, county number 20 among the 47 counties neighboring Embu, Muranga, Machakos as well as Nyeri counties, the host of this year's Madaraka Day celebrations. But obviously there are facts you would want to know about the county of Kirinyaga. Now here is Kirinyaga County's profile. Located in central Kenya, Kirinyaga County borders Embu, Muranga, Nyeri and Machakos counties. The county's headquarters are at Kerogoya. Kirinyaga County has a population of 610,411 according to 2019 Kenya Population and Housing Census. Kirinyaga has six sub-counties, Kirinyaga Central, Kirinyaga East, Kirinyaga West, Mwea East, Mwea West, and Mount Kenya Forest, covering the county's 1,478.3 square kilometers. The county has four constituencies, including Mwea, Geshugo, Ndia, and Kirinyaga Central. Agriculture is the main economic activity with the county being the largest producer of Kenya's rice. The best quality of Bishori rice is grown at Moya Irrigation Scheme. The county is the largest producer of tomatoes in the country. Coffee, tea, maize, beans, French beans among other crops are also grown in the county. Fishing is also practiced at Sagana along the river Sagana. The first governor was Joseph Ndathi, who was succeeded by Anwai Guru. Kirinyaga County has 349,836 registered voters according to IEBC 2017 records. All right, um, tomorrow will be an interesting day. The Mashijadi celebrations happening here. President Uhuru Kenyatta leading the nation in celebrating uh, this uh, Mashijadi. His guest, uh, Lazarus Chakwera, the president of the Republic of Malawi, who is on a three day state visit to the Republic of Kenya. Behind me, you can see the dais, the VIP dais, um, and that dais will have President Uhuru Kenyatta, Deputy President William Ruto, uh, hopefully, or almost guaranteed uh, the former prime minister and ODM leader Raila Ding and other national leaders including the speakers of national assembly Justin Muturi and um, the speaker of the senate uh, Ken Lusaka chief justice Martha Kome um, and other VIP guests including you know cabinet ministers and invited guests but then you can see to the left and right uh, of the uh, main tent or the VIP dais uh, you shall have Shujaz I think on the right uh, of the tent you'll have shujas or heroes uh, from across the country that will be celebrated uh, tomorrow. And again, uh, the places where the public will be seated tomorrow. Now, this is a 10,000 capacity stadium. But because of COVID-19, it will not be able to accommodate 10,000 people in the stadium. So it's an invite only. Uh, event tomorrow. So if you're a resident of Kirinyaga and your neighbor around here, 
but you do not have an invitation card, please just stay home and watch this event uh, from home because this stadium will only accommodate 3,000 people. The VIP dais will accommodate 1,000 people, then another 2,000 people from these other stands uh, that are within the stadium, and that fills the stadium 3,000 capacity, obviously because of the restrictions by the Ministry of Health uh, in terms of COVID-19. So the stadium opens at 5 a.m. Very quickly, Tom Boy. Uh, the stadium opens at 5 a.m., and then uh, all guests are expected to sit by 7.30 a.m., 7.30, everybody will be settled. And then the official program of entertainment will begin before President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy and, you know, the VIP start to arrive at around um, 10 a.m. But very quickly, let me uh, notify you about um, the caliber of guests we have tomorrow. There will be red, green, and blue. Red is the uh, main uh, VIP dais. Obviously, those ones uh, will be dropped at the gate and then they will enter the stadium. But then... If you are uh, using um, the green sticker uh, very quickly or blue sticker, you only use gate number three. Uh, that is the blue sticker. And um, you will park at Gurubani Primary School. That is where you park. Um, and if you're using uh, the green sticker, that means then you will park at the National Irrigation uh, Board grounds here in Wanguru. And then um, you will use um, gate number uh, two to actually get in. Uh, into the stadium. That's just it. Tomorrow will be a big day and uh, we'll be live. The entire Kenya Broadcasting Corporation crew is here to bring you live events from Wanguru. And by the way, Wanguru, Gurbani are the same thing. This town is called Wanguru. You, if you like it, you can call it Wanguru. If you like it, you can call it Gurbani. So let's meet it. Uh, let's meet here uh, tomorrow morning uh, during the Mashujade uh, celebrations. I'll hand it back to you, um, Tom Boyer, that you can continue with the rest of the programming. And tomorrow we'll be here early in the morning to celebrate Mashujade with the rest of Kenya. And of course, tomorrow we're going to cover those proceedings live for you. Those who may not be able to make it to the stadium can follow the proceedings virtually. Kirinyaga County is such a rich county. Very rich country. And it looks good now that, uh, you know, it's all pomp and color. Well, as Kenya celebrates uh, the Mashuja Day to be held in Kirinyaga, as Jacob Kioria told us a short while ago, Kenyans have expressed varied views on their expectations of the presidential address. And our reporter Jelly Saladi samples their views. Vijana kuna wengi ambawa ko omeitimu ilhali ajira kwa aipo raisa angazi yiyo katika otoba yake. We expect that he's going to speak about uh, of course the send off and such kind of things and of course to talk about the the heroes of Kenya. You see Mashuja is just about uh, heroism. It's way to Muku wa Kenya. The former prime minister said that uh, the fuel pricings were going to be they were going to be reduced. So I think that is uh, an, an incentive they had put with the president, the allies together, and I think uh, I believe it is something he's going to address. Our trips to major towns like uh, Kisumu, Nairobi, Kisumu, Mombasa, and some parts within our region has been badly affected with the curfew. The business has gone down. Most of our members have lost their vehicles. Na tunawasi watu fungulie kwa nkwani wengi wetu wako nyumbani, wafanyikazi, wale wengine walikuwa na tegemea hiyo sekta. Very well, it's now time to take our first break right here on KBC Prime Edition. Use the hashtag Prime Edition to engage as we are live on all our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity underscore Musa and at Tom Boyer 24. Stay with us. In October 1956, the most wanted Mau Mau fighter of all, Vaden Kamathi, was captured then tried and executed. The war against the gangs was all but over. Officially, more than 11,000 Mau Mau had been killed. Those left in the forest posed no real threat.
ili kupata sikiza tune hii ya amani bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash bado kuna watu wema na wabaya mtu yeyote hujichagulia hali ya kuishi na wengine kama huwezi ishi kwa amani na wengine usiwasumbue na kama huwezi kusaidia wengine na basi usiwathurumu lakini ni bora zaidi kuishi kwa amani na kila mtu ni bora zaidi kutafuta amani ili kupata sikiza tune hiyo ya amani bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash star 811 star 962 hash <tune> As we celebrate this year's Mashujaa Day, your national broadcaster KBC has prepared a special lineup of programs to make this occasion memorable. Our sister station Shoro FM will have a road show on 18th and 19th October with our caravan visiting various towns in Kirinyaga County. Come meet your favorite radio presenters as you enjoy entertaining live performances on Tuesday, 19th October. Catch 7 p.m. Darubini and 9 p.m. Prime Edition live on location from Kirinyaga County featuring several heroes and heroines of our time on 20th October get comprehensive coverage of the Mashujaa Day celebrations from Wanguru Stadium live on KBC Channel 1 and our radio stations keep it KBC for exciting shows and comprehensive news coverage this Mashujaa week Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now to journalist Lin Jiro was a household name for 25 years. And Jiro now aged 72 remains the longest serving head of the presidential press service having served two presidents Jomo Kenyatta and Daniel Arap Moi. When our reporter Kam Chemenza visited Njiro at his Nakuru home, he told her that life at State House was not that rosy after all. Take a look. I was born on Sunday, 14th August, 1949, in Runyeches, Embo. Lin Jiru, now 72 years old, lets us into the story of his life. Here is the man who literally won the hearts of two presidents serving 44 years between them. We met him at his farm in Ngata, Rongai, Nakuru County. He tells us about his journey that began at the time when the Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie died around 1975. Mzee Jomo Kenyatta telephoned the then director of information, Eddie Madimato. So he told Madimato, please give me a young man who is a good writer to replace uh, Francis. So Eddie Madimato got me from Kakamega. So I reported in Akuru. That's where Mr. Jomo Kenyatta was. That was 77. And that is how the journey began. After the passing on of Mr. Jomo Kenyatta, Njiro will be picked by his successor, President Daniel Arap Moi, to join his press service. It is at this point that he won Moi's trust, serving him for years. Moi was under pressure from the change the constitution group there was a clique which did not want Moi to ascend to the presidency after the death of Mr. Jomo Kenyatta Moi knew there was a new person working for Jomo Kenyatta who he could work with so he sent for me Early in the morning, a car was sent by Mzai Moi. I went to Kabarak. He told me, uh, uh, Mr. Njiro, I have been watching you. The way you are working for Mzai Jomo Kenyatta, I'm happy for you. And I want you to help me. I was 28 years old. I said, so I was surprised. How, how can I help a vice president? 
He says his work was to ensure all the press statements he wrote regarding President Kenyatta's visit to Rift Valley painted Moy in positive light as one who was rallying Rift Valley leaders to support the president and his government. He told me, whenever Mr. Jomo Kenyatta, when you announce that he is coming to Nakuru, make it standard practice at the bottom of your story to write at the same time the vice president and the minister for home affairs honorable daniel arab moy has called a peop has called upon the people of rift valley to welcome to give him a kenyatta arousing welcome as soon as he arrives at my mahio it was easier for Moi to pick him as his press person immediately Jomo Kenyatta died. He was only 28 years old. For 24 years, Njiru was in active service as Moi's presidential press secretary and personal assistant. A duty he maintained for yet another 18 years until Moi passed on in 2020. Njiru, who has now retired, resides at his farm in Ngata Nakuru. He says though he feels good and relaxed, he acknowledges that retirement is not easy. Retirement is not entirely geographical movement from one place to the other. By and large, retirement is psychological. In retirement, he says one loses predictable income, identity, authority, gets delinked from routine and rhythm. So there is a situation where there is a degree of loneliness. Where you wake up, you dress up, and then you realize you are going nowhere. Retirement is difficult. He now spends most of his time managing his Chirinam resort established on a 25-acre piece of land in Gata Nakuru. And in what seems to be a slow adaptation to retirement, we ask Njiru whether he misses his state house days. Yes, but not completely. Remember, when I was working in the state house, I was disadvantaged to a degree. I am a Moembo. Jomo Kenyatta was a Kikuyu. When Musa Kenyatta died, Musa Moi came in. He is college. So you see, I was working among Kikuyus who were in leadership and the top people are Kikuyus. When Musa Moi came in, the inner circle were college. So I was always treated as a foreigner. He says with the presence of power, money and glamour, infighting was all time high and those who did not belong suffered the brunt of it. As I was about to retire, I suffered a lot of undermining, tribal or racial slurs, but luckily Jomo Kenyatta and Musa Moi had faith in me. They protected me like the apples of their eyes. People thought I was enjoying too much. I benefited a lot, but equally, I suffered. On to now uh, a disturbing item. Police in Kiambu County have launched a search for a 24-year-old man reported to have killed his mother. Eric Kamau, who is on the run, stabbed his mother to death Tuesday morning. According to Riru DCIO Justa Sumbati, the suspect also stabbed his brother, who had gone to the rescue of the diseased, leaving him with serious injuries. Gidurai 45 in Kiambu County. Residents trying to come to terms with the death of 47-year-old Mary Wanja, who is said to have been stabbed to death by her son early Tuesday morning. Erika Mao is said to have also turned the knife against his brother, who had come to save their mother from his wrath. Ilikuwa saatisa usiku. Wakati nilisikia nduru nikiwa kule kwangu juu. 
wakati nilitoka kuvaa trouser dakika mbili tatu kuruka ndani nikapata huo kindugu yake ananiambia Jose kuja uone kama ameua madhe saingine tunalea wa watoto vibaya sana ni vizuri sisi kama wazazi tuna ukiona mtoto wamefanya makosa mrekebishe na muoneshe the right way wacha kumsoothe because the way unamsoothe the way anaendelea kuwa mtukutu na finally ni wewe atakutenda According to Ruiru DCIO Justice Ombati, the police will stop at nothing until the investigations are completed. The body of the deceased was taken to Kenyatta University Mochery as investigations continue. For Prime Edition, I'm Safin Aching Oma. To politics now, Deputy President William Ruto has urged Kenyans to elect leaders keen on representing interest of the common man. Ruto, who spoke in Lamu as he wrapped up his coastal tour, urged residents to support his 2022 bottom-up economic model, saying it holds the key to the economic empowerment of majority of Kenyans in a spirited campaign to woo an electorate perceived it inclined towards ODM leader Raila Odinga, the DP, to vast the island holding meetings in Peketoni, Kizingitini and Mkungini, pledging to empower the youth economically. Sera yetu ni ya bottom up. Tunaanza na wale walio chini, tuwapandishe ngazi ya uchumi. Ili tuweke Kenya mahali ambapo panapatikana usawa tuondoe ubaguzi na tuhakikishe ya kwamba hakuna wa Kenya wengine wanawachwa nyuma. Na wauliza watu wa hapa kizingitini tutakubaliana twende barabara hiyo pamoja? Tunakubaliana? Na vile tulifanya yale mengine yote tumefanya hii hata na hii tunawaambia leo tuko na mpango ya kuitimiza ndio tuweze kufukuza umaskini mashinani. From politics onto the corridors of justice, the family of slain businessman Tob Cohen has petitioned the Judicial Service Commission to order the immediate removal of Justice Sankale Ole Kantai as judge. In the petition, Cohen's sister accused Justice Kantai of allegedly breaching the Judicial Code of Conduct and Ethics and the oath of office, and that investigations carried out allegedly link the judge to the murder of Cohen. Upon Justice Sankale Olekantai moving to court to stop his arrest and subsequent prosecution in the Tob Cohen murder case, the sister to the slain businessman Gabriel Heine Van Stratton has now petitioned the Judicial Service Commission for the judge's removal. Through their lawyers, Cohen's family claims the judge has breached the Judicial Code of Conduct and Ethics and Oath of Office. A judicial officer cannot shall not, will not participate in drafting pleadings for an accused person or for a litigant. Justice Ole Kantai assisted Sarah Wairemi to draft his statement, her statement. The best thing then the judge needs to do is avoid all these things, ask maybe for some time to step aside and get into the process. To respect and adhere the Judicial Service Code of Conduct, which prevents, precludes, and forbids him from advising or rather giving his input in matters that are alive before a court of law. They say a response filed by the investigating officer, John Gashomi, laid bare the extent of Kantai's involvement in the illegal and fraudulent transactions on shares of Cohen Hard at Tobbs Limited that could have fueled the murder. He is alleged to have forged documents, government documents, in the transfer of the shares one Silas Ita to himself and later to Sarah Cohen. Forensic analysis by the Directorate of Criminal Investigations also have revealed a frequent communication between the judge and the accused person, Sarah Werimo, between the 17th to 19th of July 2019, the time Cohen is believed to have been killed. Elsewhere, the Director of Public Prosecution has been allowed to amend the charge sheet and introduce new evidence in the 73.5 million graft case involving Migori Governor Okoth Obado and 15 others. The defense thereafter opposed the amended charge sheet. Therefore, I invite your honor to find you do not have 
a signed charge signed by the office that the constitution has vested the power to institute criminal proceedings. These powers have not been donated to any other institution. All the accused persons will now take plea again on Thursday this week. For Prime Edition, I'm Serafina Robbie. Well, that story brings us to a second break right here on KBC Prime Edition. And Karen Jenga is on standby with the day's business news. Richard Munga will be joining us later on with the sports. Stay with us. Holders are notified to report and surrender unclaimed financial assets to the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority on or before November 1st, 2021. It is now easier to report and surrender. Visit www.holders.ufaa.go.ke and get started. Beat the November 1st, 2021 deadline. It's your turn. Pass the baton. Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority. Receive. Safeguard. Reunite. 14th October 2011 will always be remembered as a Rubicon crossing moment for the Kenyan Defense Forces. Kenya's intervention was a commitment by the Kenya Defense Forces to protect and defend Kenya's territorial integrity to secure sovereignty, national interest, as well as secure peace in Somalia and the larger Horn of Africa. You are warriors, isn't you? Yes, sir. And you really shown it because you are warriors. I know your work. I know how much you've done in these uh, operations. Uh, I know the commitment. I know the dedication. And I urge you to continue uh, in the manner that we are doing our job. Welcome back. Now we take a look at the latest in the world of business. Now Kenya risks being listed on the global financial blacklist if it does not iron out its money laundering policy and regulatory deficiencies. The Director General of the Financial Reporting Center, Captain Retired Saitoti Maika, says that the teething challenges will be addressed in the proceeds of crime and anti-money laundering amendment bill 2021, which is in its first reading, but quickly running out of time in its implementation. 10 evaluation Kenya's legal profession was identified as a vulnerability in aiding violators of financial laws. To seal this loophole, the Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Amendment Bill 2021 proposes suspending the right to privacy under Article 31 of the Constitution for people suspected to have violated laws relating to financial flows. However, it has been a tough undertaking. Not all instances are such that lawyers are willingly being involved in this. Some of them, by the very nature of what they do, are abused by criminals. So again, this bill will take into account the fact that it will address the possible abuses by criminals. The amendments which were proposed by National Assembly Majority Leader Amos Kimunya seeks to give more powers to investigating authorities like FRC to take action on individuals suspected of money laundering. The law further gives FRC powers to stop transactions reported to authorities. It will go a long way to address a couple of issues. One, we strongly believe that it will enhance the identification of proceeds of crime. And secondly, it will also address uh, the issue of uh, the deficiency in respect of 
uh, vulnerabilities that exist. FRC now says it has embarked on stakeholder engagements and data analytics to flank the sophisticated habits of criminals who have now majorly embraced technology for their illicit trade as it awaits for legislation to take root. If I look at a partner like the media, the media shapes public opinion. It informs the public. So we can't live in isolation of the fact that we need the media. We must partner with the media. Uh, leveraging on data analytics, basically to address the issue of, uh, of, of, of vulnerabilities related to, 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 to the challenges. Because when you're looking at money movement, moving digitally, it means that it can cross to any border in a flash of a second. And it's only technology that can detect that. So as FRC, we definitely have to leverage on technology to do. If the proceeds of crime and anti-money laundering amendment bill 2021 is approved, the amendments will compose of the most important changes to the proceeds of crime and anti-money laundering act 2009. Now to farming, cotton farmers in Taita Taveta County are enjoying a bumper harvest of the new BT and hybrid cotton seeds. Various farmers in the semi-arid county say they have doubled their production since the hybrid cotton seeds were introduced in the market. Last year, Kenya approved the use of biotech cotton seeds after nearly two decades of intense lobbying and research. The government says proper implementation of BT cotton farming is expected to increase revenue from 3.5 billion shillings in 2019 to 200 billion shillings by the year 2030. The cotton subsector is also expected to help create 500,000 cotton-related jobs and 100,000 from the apparel sector by 2025. <laughs> BT cotton is a genetically enhanced seed through the incorporation of a gene derived from soil occurring bacteria to protect itself against African bollworm, which is the most damaging pest to the crop. Following the distribution of BT cotton seeds last year, farmers in various parts of the country have started to enjoy improved production. Na tunaimiza wakulima wapande kwa wingi kwa sababu cotton hii si swenye ndo tutainumua. Na tunawakika kwamba hii itatusaidia katika viwanda vetu vya Kenya badala ku import by Kenya build Kenya in Taita Taveta county most farmers say they have doubled their production in the last year tulikuwa tumeanza kitambo tukaanza na hizo mbegu za zamani lakini hizo mbegu zilikusumbua mpaka mwisho zikawa hazioti na zipanda lakini hazimei na tukao tunapata shida lakini kutoka mwaka jana ndio hii experiment ilika, ikaanza ya kuleta BT cotton Cotton farmers in the county say increased cotton production is expected to spur activity in the manufacturing sector through the provision of raw material ginners, spinners, textile mills and apparel manufacturers. The chair lady of Pambani Mali Cotton Cooperative Society, Chausiku Ramadhani, urged the government to help cotton farmers access more markets for their products to improve their returns. Commercialization of cotton farming is expected to raise domestic demand to 260,000 bales from the current 140,000 bales. Tukiendelea hivi, hakuna mtu ambaye takuwa analilia nja. Kama vile leo tumeuza pamba, tunaimani ya kwamba, hata kwa yule ambaye hana chakula ndani ya nyumba, hataenda kununua maindi, hataenda kununua kile ambacho anacho kitaka. Now to some good news for aloe vera farmers and aloe vera farming in Baringo County has received a major boost following the construction of a multi-million processing factory. Baringo Governor Stanley Kiptis says the factory will help create job opportunities for more than a thousand people directly. Let's take a look. Zero. The multi-million shilling factory, which was launched at Koriema, Baringo South, will see hundreds of farmers benefiting from the practice. Some of the teaching challenges that have been facing us, including, among many, the poverty status in our region, and also the challenges that a number of our youth, closer to 71%, are not employed. 
The factory, which had initially closed due to mismanagement, will soon be up and running, offering relief to the region's surplus aloe output. Baringo South MP Charles Kamuren urged farmers to take advantage of the factory by going into aloe vera farming. He further states the factory will be able to employ a thousand youth from the region. <laughs> Aloe vera thrives in the mostly semi-arid area and requires little maintenance effort which the various stakeholders hope would transform the vast unused land in the county. Zion Tech Company Director William Zhu said the company will expand further in the region by building other factories in five sub-counties to take advantage of the continued embrace of aloe vera farming. Our company, Zion Kim Biotech Corporation, to invest significant resource to develop this alloy processing factory in Barugo County. Now, for those who love aloe vera juice, now you know which county to visit. That is how we wrap up uh, business news for tonight. But before I go, here is the foreign exchange uh, rate and also how the shares have been trading at the NEC market. Have a good night. My name is Carol Jenga. I've heard them talking about the father of the house, but I've never seen him. What is this? I love the smell. Should have told her how you feel. Then what? It has never been erosive for me. The people who are watching from outside thought that I was enjoying too much. Not so. I benefited a lot. But equally, I suffered a lot. How is it like working for the president almost around the clock? Join me, come Chimenza, this Tuesday and Wednesday as I engage Lin Jiru, who worked for the founding father, President Jomo Kenyatta, and later President Moi. Oh, good evening. This is KBC Sports with me, Richard Munga. Now, the national soccer team, Harambe Starlets, held their final training session Tuesday in preparation for their 2022 Africa Women Cup of Nations qualifier match against South Sudan that is set for tomorrow at the Nyaya National Stadium. Starlets will, however, miss the services of Captain Doka Shikobe, Defender Ruth Ngotsi, and forward Mona Lima Adam. Harambe starlets under the tutelage of Charles Okere have been in camp since early this month and train today as they aim to qualify for the African Women Cup of Nations for the second time and ultimately Hannah Slot in the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup that will be co-hosted by New Zealand and Australia. 
we have prepared everybody to play. So given a chance tomorrow, the players we are going to field, I believe that uh, it's an easy uh, work to do because it's only about uh, to drop maybe one or two players, then we are good to go for the match. Depending on preparation yet, we take every opponent serious. So South Sudan should check like any other opponent. So and, and then again, one match at a time. So to Kishinda South Sudan home, we wait for our way, we win, then we wait for the other opponent to come. On the other hand, South Sudan's bright starlets have been in calm for the last nine days. After arriving from South Africa where they participated in this year's Kosafa Championships. This has been um, just two of like a few matches that we've played in the last month. So I don't know if we specifically prepared for Kenya or specifically prepared for any team. I think for us it's a, it's a long process that we and we need to trust the process. Both games will be staged at Nyayo National Stadium after Bright Starlets opted to host their return leg in Nairobi rather than Juba South Sudan. Daniel Mwendwa, Sports. Also reigning FKF Premier League champions Task FC have arrived in Egypt ahead of their CAF Champions League second preliminary round return leg march against the Egyptian giant Zamalek that is slated for Friday in Alexandria. The Brewers lost 1-0 to the five-time African champions in the first leg that was played on Saturday at the Nyo National Stadium. <laughs> Tasca FC will be aiming to overturn an Arouani loss to Zamalek in the first leg played on Saturday at the Nyao National Stadium. The Robert Matano charges held their final training session Monday before their departure Tuesday morning ahead of the crucial tie. Kenyan international Eugene Asike is optimistic the Brewers will put up a good fight in Alexandria. We had our mistakes in the game but also we had our positives uh, and they believe at this time when you're going to face uh, Zamalek in Cairo we need we need to focus as well on the positive on the positive side there are things we did well there are things we didn't do well as a team and uh, we acknowledge that and that's what we have been trying to to work on what we concede na kwenda wrong ni kwa tukufunga tuko kimimi yani kama kimimi venye nimeona tuko watu wako more hiyo game imemotivate watu sana watu wamekama positive sana kwa sababu Task FC advanced to the first round of the competition after beating AS Artasol of Djibouti for one on aggregate in the preliminary round while Zamalek were among the top teams that received a bye to the first round. Well, as the reigning FKF champions, you know, prepare to take on Zamalek on Friday. The FKF Premier League continues tomorrow. You have AFC Leopards taking on Gord Mahia, the oldest derby in Kenya. Yours for Parker versus Madara United. Bandari, current leaders on the log, taking on Poster Rangers. And Ulenzi Stars taking on Bidco United, among other matches. Now to other matters, the Kenya Volleyball Federation 2021-2022 league season will serve off on the November 26th at the Nyaya National Stadium. The men's first leg is slated for 26th to 28th of November at the Nyaya National Stadium, while the women's leg will be played on the 27th and 28th of November at the KPA Makande Hall. After the completion of the five legs, the national playoffs will be played on the 24th till the 26th of June 2022. GSU are the reigning champions in the men's category, while Prisons Kenya are the title holders in the ladies' category. The boy we are serving today. Up goes GSU, Cornelius Nagat using his experience there, he goes for the float service, gets it over the... Well, that's all the time we have for sports tonight. But just a reminder, the Champions League continues tonight, where in the early kick of matches, Manchester City a beat Club Brugge 5-1, while Sporting Lisbon beat Besiktas 4-1. In matches set to start at 10 p.m., we have Shakhtar Donetsk taking on Real Madrid, PSG versus Leipzig, Atletico Madrid hosting Liverpool in Madrid, Ajax versus Dortmund, Porto versus Inter Milan, versus AC Milan rather, while Inter Milan will be hosting Sheriff, that is, at the San Siro Stadium. Well, that does it for Sports Tonight. I'm Richard Munga. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing, but don't go too far. Peter Museo and Tom Boyer are joining you shortly on the other side of the studio. Good night.
Thank you so much, Richard Munga, for the sports update. Remember, tomorrow is Mashuja Day, and the live event will be broadcast live right here at KBC. So keep watching KBC. My name is Purity Museo. Susan Fuku has been our sign language interpreter tonight. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing, and good night. And I'm Tom Boyer. Good night, and God bless you.